Well, hey guys, welcome back to Hazel Bell Farm. My name is Donna and we are in storm prep mode. So we've been watching a storm, we've been watching a disturbance for about a week now uh, out in the Atlantic, knowing that it's probably coming our way. And the talk is just now starting to get a little bit exciting in town that, hey, we probably need to prepare for a storm coming next week. Um, so we are quite prepared already and I wanted to kind of touch base with you guys on a few things that we do to get the farm ready for a storm. So I know there are several new people in Florida this year, people who haven't experienced a hurricane season yet, and I hope that I have some pointers that will help you not only weather the storm, but make it a little more comfortable for you. So the first thing is obviously food and water. So you wanna make sure that you have plenty of non-perishable food and water on hand. Experts say one gallon per person per day. If you've ever run out of water, you'll know that's not nearly enough. That would be your minimum. So I've got bottled water here. This is good drinking water. We also buy jugs of water. We keep that on hand. We can water frequently so that we have that good clean water. And then we also want to make sure that we fill any containers up with water. We will also fill trash cans with trash bags in them with hose water to keep on the back porch to flush toilets, fill uh, bathtubs. You can get one of those really neat, um, it's like a bladder, a really neat water storage container. That so water is your number one thing. That goes for the farm as well. So for the animals out in the fields, we'll make sure that all the troughs are full before the storm comes. We'll put out extra troughs that we're not currently using. Every bucket will be filled with water. And we'll make sure that everything is topped off before the storm hits. To keep things interesting, because my people don't love water. They, Eric drinks water, I drink water. They all drink water, but they don't love water. I'd be fine with just water and coffee. So. I also make sure that we have about two gallons of tea already made before the storm hits, and I keep these on hand as well. So these are just those quick little easy mix-ins that you can just throw into a single bottle of water, and that's why I get the single bottles. Also, I keep a Sharpie on hand so they can write their name on the bottle, and there's no half bottles laying around wondering whose is whose and wasting water. We're not doing that in a storm. Obviously, you want to make sure you have plenty of shelf-stable food. That's because if the power goes out and you end up losing everything in your refrigerator, you still got to eat. So, things like applesauce, canned fruits, peaches, apples, um, fruit cocktail, things like that are great for the kids. It's a nice little treat, so they're not just getting their three square meals. They're able to get a treat as well. One thing that happens that we see during the storm is snacking out of boredom. And I think if you've ever experienced a Florida hurricane, you know what I'm talking about. Um, we also like to make sure we always do pasta. So we'll cook up a batch of pasta about the day before a storm hits, coat it with olive oil, put it in a gallon size plastic bag, stick it in the refrigerator, and then we have pasta. You can do what you want with it. You can, we've got spaghetti sauce on the shelf. This already has meat in it, so that works. You can get canned uh, Alfredo sauce and use that with your pasta. You can just do some pesto or Parmesan and butter kind of style in your pasta. You can do any number of things. So we like to have that already cooked up. All we have to do is heat it. We like to have food already made that all we have to do is heat. So I've got some meat in a can. This is easily drained. It's also got lots of good chicken broth. So we can make that into a quick chicken salad. We can throw that on the pasta. We can do any number of things. We can just eat it with crackers if we want. Some beef stew, chicken soup, anything like that. That all you have to do is open the can and you can eat it. You don't even have to heat it up if that's not possible for you. Although heating is nice, which brings me to my next point. Make sure that you have a way to cook. So make sure that you have extra propane for your grill, some cast iron to cook in, some stainless steel pots. You don't want to ruin your nonstick coating on any of your pots and pans whenever you're using them on your grill. So having the cast iron is a good way to do that. If you don't have that, you can put a little bit of Dawn dish soap on the bottom side of your pots and pans, and that'll make them easier to clean any soot off of from the grill after you're finished. Also, we have a gas range stove in the back there. Make sure that you understand that when you try to cook on that stove, you won't be able to light it without power. The little, the little starter won't work. So you need to know how, even though the manufacturer says 
don't do it. <laughs> it says it's dangerous to do it. Um, know how to start your, your stove top with propane with matches. Um, that's something that I've practiced doing so I can make sure I can cook in the event that we need to. Although I prefer the grill or cooking over a fire if I have to because um, it gets hot after a hurricane comes through. You want to make sure that you have disposable everything. So from utensils to plates, paper towels, cups, everything you want to be throw away. If you're good, usually using reusable napkins, a lot of people are doing that in the homestead community now. I think that's wonderful. It's a great save the planet kind of thing, reducing waste. However, during a hurricane is not the time you want to accumulate extra laundry. <laughs> so paper towels are gonna be your friend during a storm. We also like to get some good baby wipes or just um, all around, these are everyday clean wipes. And uh, these are good, they're already moistened, they're good to just wipe hands, wipe mouths, um, clean up during the day when you don't have access to a hot shower. So it's a nice, nice thing to have on hand. Next, you wanna make sure you have plenty of flashlights and batteries for those flashlights. So we have several different size flashlights and spotlights. We make sure that the rechargeable ones are all charged. We make sure that we have all the appropriate size batteries that we need before a storm hits. You don't wanna search for those when the power goes out. Oftentimes here in Florida, a hurricane, the worst part of a hurricane seems to come through overnight when it's dark outside. If the power goes out and you need to get up and check something or you have a child who's afraid of the dark, everybody gets their own light. We keep one in every room and we have some tricks to make that light extend a little bit further than usual. One of the things that you can do is use a gallon sized jug of water filled with water and take this flashlight turn it on and stick it up against that jug of water and the water will help illuminate the whole room. So that's a neat little trick. You can do the same thing with a glow stick. Glow sticks are found at the Dollar Tree store. I still have to run and get those, but you break one of those open and put it inside a clear glass of water and that will uh, reflect the light and illuminate a bigger area instead of just having a light stick nearby. So that's a cool trick. Kids love that too. You wanna make sure that you clean out your refrigerator. You don't wanna have any old spoiled food in your refrigerator in the event your power goes out. So everything in here needs to be good and fresh. And then this is the food that you're going to eat first if your power goes out. Don't get into those canned goods if you don't have to. Eat from your fresh stuff. Use those fresh fruits and vegetables, that cold pasta, all of those things that you have ready to go in the refrigerator before you get into the shelf stable food. <laughs> On that note, Make sure that you clean your house. There's nothing worse than living through a hurricane with no power for a week with a dirty house. <laughs> so scrub your toilets, clean your floors, get ready to live with your doors and windows open, and get that laundry done before the storm. Make sure your sheets are washed. All of the things, clean your whole house, but also understand that when the storm has passed and the power does return, you're gonna have to do it all over again. <laughs> Make sure that you charge any battery packs for anything with a screen, any tablets, and any uh, rechargeable batteries for your phones, for your tablets, for the things that your kids like to stay occupied with, any of those electronic devices. You wanna make sure those are charged before the storm. Also, make sure you have other things to do. If your kids aren't used to having all that screen time, that might not be a good time to introduce it. Puzzles, books, give them some things to do. Cards, this is good family time. This is when we, we have some of our most enjoyable times are over card games in our house. So take the opportunity to enjoy one another and put away the screens if you can. Bug spray. Hurricanes in Florida usually leave us hot, muggy, tropical. There's gonna be mosquitoes, you're gonna be outside, your doors and windows are open. Bug spray, make sure you have it on hand. On the homestead, we have quite a few places of things that just need to be picked up. So make sure all of that gets done. Hi, girl. So cows and animals, we will leave these stalls open so they can come in if they choose, but we will never stall them and lock them in here. If one of these trees overhead loses a branch or goes over on top and the cow can't get out, that would be a disaster. Hi, lady. She's so mad at me. Hi, lady. Tying up loose ends, getting all those little things you've been meaning to do is important on the homestead. For example, this stall right here, 
water rushes in. It's a dirt floor stall and water rushes in. So we need to uh, either run gutters up there. That's not gonna happen before the storm comes. Ladies, that was uncalled for and that was not ladylike. Not at all. You better behave yourself. Shh, she's a camera hog, what can I say? Oh, she burped in my face. Dolly, she's pushy. She's being pushy with, with Maple. She's pushy with Maple. So anyways, what we'll do, we need to dig a trench over there and we need to build up some dirt to keep the water from rushing in so that the stall will be available to the cows should they need to come in out of the rain. Usually they're fine out there in the rain. They're fine in the wind. Occasionally they'll want to come in. This stall is fine. We'll leave it open as well. And then I have a stall over at the milk barn over there. This is my milk barn. I have a stall where that window is. I'll leave that open for the cows to come and go if they choose. Uh, the, one of the sheep will be there to come and go as she chooses. And then we have this open side. It needs to be cleaned up, but I'm gonna put the chicken tractor in here for my meat chicks. Right now they're about this big and I just don't wanna leave them out in the storm. These girls, these chickens. So what I'll do with these chickens they perch up on this side at night. So I'll put them in. We'll put up a panel right here or a tarp so that sideways rain doesn't blow in to get them. I'm going to prop the door open so they can come and go as they please. Feed. These are my feed bins for the animals and I need to make sure that they're all topped off before the storm. Even if I have enough to get us through the storm, I run the risk of running out of food afterwards because if there's no power at the feed store, they won't open to provide service to us. So I need to make sure these are full and I have hay for the cows. This is a window air conditioning unit. It's a small one, but it'll, it'll cool off one room. We'll take this out of here. We'll put it in our master bedroom in the house at night. We'll run the generator to it and everybody will pile in one room. The kids will bring, bring their mattresses to sleep on the floor so that they can have comfortable air conditioning to sleep with at night. Milk. I'm gonna do my best to sell as much milk as possible right before the storm comes. But after that, I'll still be getting milk every single day. So I have the generator to run the milk pump for Dolly because she has very small teats. She's impossible to hand milk. I really need the pump for her. So we have that in working order. We've already checked it. And um, I'll be getting milk from her and from Maple every day. So my plan is to make cheese with it so that it doesn't go to waste. Uh, I will just pull the milk right into the house and I'll make a batch of cheese every day if I have to. And then we'll be loaded up on cheese. When power returns, I'll be able to just milk and build up our milk supply again to sell to customers. Generator and gas. Fill your gas cans. Do this days in advance before the pumps run out of gas. Make sure all your vehicles are filled with gas just in case. We've got extra cans to fill with gas for the generator. We use the generator for our well pump. We have used it for a septic pump if needed. We don't need that here now, thankfully, but if you're on a private septic with a raised drain field, you probably have a pump. You'll need to run that every, every couple of days if, if needed without power. Generator works great for that. The air conditioner at night. We also plug into the kitchen refrigerator about an hour a day, maybe two hours a day, two different times. And then we plug into a deep freezer once or twice a day for about an hour at a time as well. Paring down your freezers. There's always extra stuff that you're almost never gonna get to in those freezers. We have several of these small freezers around our property. Our freezers like this at the bottom side of the garage refrigerator. So paring those down, trying to condense, get rid of the stuff that you really don't need, that you intended to use, that's freezer burned, get rid of that. Condense down the stuff that you do want to keep. If you kept some pork fat for lard, go ahead and render that lard ahead of time. If you can cook any meat ahead of time, do that. If you can can some meat ahead of time, do that. So that's what we're doing. 
And last, I'll say follow your official local forecast, both nationally but locally is more important. No evacuation zones, know where uh, floodways and flood zones are, know where your local shelters are. If you have special needs, know where the special needs shelters are. If you have to bring uh, breathing equipment or oxygen tanks, that kind of thing. Pet safe shelters, make sure that your pets are current on their shots and you have all paperwork showing that if you need to evacuate your home with your pet. Make sure you have enough meds to get you through the next week or two without power, just in case. Hopefully you don't have to, but make sure just in case. We're following the National Weather Service and we're following Mike's weather page at SpaghettiModels.com. Those are our favorite resources to use. We also, um, we wanna make sure that we have a weather radio on hand. Locally here, we don't have satellite for our television, so we don't have, we only stream through internet services. We stream our internet off of a tower about three miles away, and it's the same tower that provides our cell service. If that tower goes out in a storm due to wind damage, lightning damage, something related to the storm, we don't have any internet, we don't have any cell service, and we're completely cut off from communication. So weather radio in our situation would be good to have. So thanks, let me know what you're doing to get your homestead ready for the storm coming up. I hope everybody stays safe out there and checks in. Good luck to you guys. Talk to you soon, bye.